Okay. I showed you in a prior video the Nissan, which is a subsidiary of Minox, by the way. The Nissan i40 Speedlight. Full TTL capabilities with the Fuji X-T1, X-T10, X-Pro2, and goodness knows uh, how many others. Now, this does not have a PC Sync port on it. It does take four AA batteries. Uh, it's kind of robust. I mean, it's Chinese, uh, but it doesn't feel like a typical uh, Chinese uh, speed light. It does have an autofocus assist lamp on the front of it, but in case you're wondering, of course, the Fuji X-T1 and uh, X-T10 and X-Pro2 have an autofocus assist lamp on the front. This does not work, and uh, Nissan tells you that. So in case you want to know why the autofocus assist lamp in really low light doesn't work, it does not work because Fuji's firmware does not allow for communicating through the hot shoe autofocus assist uh, lamp um, activation through any of the Fuji systems. So it exists here. They make this for Nikon and for Canon and whatnot, but this is one is for Fuji. The I-40, which is the guide number of 40, by the way, has a pop-out diffuser beneath and a, and a removable bounce card on top. It does come with a little diffuser, which is inside its little case that it comes with. It comes also with a little foot. And uh, this is a cute little awesome, uh, robust, far better than a typical uh, Chinese uh, speed light. It does have a video light on it. Let me turn that on for you. With uh, nine different power settings. I found, you know, it's obviously weak. I mean, you you, you can't expect either long life or, or, or high output off of two little LEDs on uh, the front of this unit. But this is it. And it does have adjustable output. That's it. It's max. And I found in a really dark situation, it's good for filming video at about uh, eight or nine feet or so. But, you know... It is what it is. They give it to you as a default. Now, there is a uh, slave digital function on this, and uh, if you use a little pop up, a uh, little dinky uh, XE8 um, flash on your uh, Fuji uh, XT1, a little pop up flash on the XT10, there is a sensor in here for using this in slave mode. So, right now, it is in slave mode, ready to fire, point it at whatever you want. Drop it like an Easter egg wherever you want, and uh, it'll work for that. This is rather expensive, little speed light, 260 bucks. Um, next is manual setting, as I showed you. Right now it's blinking, which means it's still in the super secret mode, which is holding this button down for three seconds. And then this will start blinking, and on the Fuji X-T1, X-T10, and X-Pro2, it will high speed sync at up to one four thousandth of a second perfectly. The, uh, you do not have uh, automatic sensing. There is not an auto sensor on the front of this um, for sensing uh, like a Nikon Speedlight does for sensing and quenching the flash. You'll have to set the power output yourself back here manually. That's no big deal. That's really easy. Not a problem at all. Um, as I've stated a thousand times, a uh, Speedlight that's on a camera is uh, not all that useful. Uh, if you want, because angle of incidence equals angle reflection, you stick your uh, speed line on top of your camera, you just get this flat, ugly, boring, um, you know, point and shoot light. Now, if you want an off camera TTL cable, by the way, uh, I should mention that this speed light does have full TTL capability. You just pop it on auto or TTL, and it will work in full TTL mode on your X-T1, X-T10, X-Pro2. So it's right there at the bottom. Um, but for high speed sync, especially get it off camera. This is the uh, ability that you have. Pop it on there. And I'm going to pop this on here. This is made by ProMaster. The uh, Canon one is kind of expensive and not really made any better, by the way. There we go. Got the locking feature there. Turn her on. Let's crank her up to a four thousandth of a second. And ISO. And ISO 400. F2.8. Turn the Nissan on. Manual, 1 16th power. Yeah, we're at 4,000th of a second. That's a bit too far away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not bad. I forgot I had it in continuous high. Forgive me, I've been doing so much testing today, I'm kind of sleep deprived. By the way, it will also fire in continuous high. But it will not um, high speed sync at continuous high, so that's an issue you're gonna have to deal with. Okay, uh, 400. 
half power, about 12 feet away, 4 thousandths of a second, F28. <laughs> Full high speed sync capable. It's really dark over there behind the camera, by the way. Here's a pile of clothes over there. And let me try it again at uh, half power. Remember, I am at 4 thousandths of a second. F28, ISO 800. Let me bring it up to ISO uh, 1200, 1250. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. One four thousandth of a second, F28, ISO 1250. Perfect. High speed sync. You can't fake that. One four thousandth of a second. Right there, one four thousandth. Um, so, gotta get your darn speed light off your darn camera. As I've said a thousand times. Let me take that off there. Let me unlock it. And you got to press that button. It really sits on there tough. There's a little foot back there that presses some rubber down on top of the hot shoe to lock it into place. This is made by ProMaster, which ProMaster is certainly not famous for making uh, awesome stuff. And this is certainly no exception. You can buy a Canon TTL cable. But here it is. Uh, kind of expensive at uh, 260 bucks. But uh, it is a tiny little beast. Um, if you wanted to use this on camera for simple stuff, especially for high speed sync, you know, that's okay, or for some simple dinky stuff, but I mean, you're not getting the correct illumination by uh, setting this thing on top of your camera. You gotta get your speed light off of your camera. So what you need to buy is a Canon, Canon uh, TTL flash sync cable. Whether that's a third party Canon or Canon Canon, you know, that's your decision. The Canon one, I think, costs $89. But uh, it works perfectly in high-speed sync, X-T1, X-T10, and X-Pro2 as tested. And uh, has the full swivel capabilities as any Nikon Speedlight does. And it's a tiny little beast, which is appropriate. Um, guide number is basically half that of a, a SB800. It's actually a little less than half, but... Uh, when it comes to fill flash for high speed sync capabilities where you're exposing for uh, your background and you're raising your subject matter, uh, subject matter or person, you know, you get a person with their back to the sun, you know, you're just doing some fill flash to uh, raise the illumination. And, uh, you know, you really got to have one of these, you know, just having the speed light on top of the camera doesn't cut it. It just looks like snapshots. Angle of incidence equals angle reflection. You got to get the speed light off the camera get some depth and definition between the shadow, the specular, and uh, the diffuse, the midtones. So anyway, that's it. That's the Nissan i40 Digital. And by the way, the 40 stands for the guide number. They are coming out with a, a wireless uh, i60. I don't know if that will be uh, off-camera, TTL capable or not. This one is not off-camera. Um, as I told you in a prior video on Fuji Secrets, you do need more than the center pin connector to a trip initiate high speed synchronization so off camera TTL is not possible with this only on camera or obviously on camera still using a, a TTL cable thank you for watching so much thank you so much for watching right there we go and if you like this video and drop me a buck or two or uh, you know go buy one of these speed lights so you can have high speed synchronization capability with your Fuji and uh, thanks for watching okay bye